Welcome to Tech Tuesdays at Fitech. Today we're going to cover ignition time to control. What it is, how it works, and how to set it up. And then we're going to go through and set the timing on this truck. Ignition timing control is using a distributor with a two-wire pickup to send a signal to the computer. The computer will send a signal to the ignition coil to dwell it and make a spark. In order to set up a distributor to be ignition timing control capable, you'll need to disable the vacuum advance, lock out the mechanical advance, and install it in the engine properly. To lock out a distributor, you'll first need to press the pin out. You can do that with a punch and a hammer. Take the gear off, remove the locking screw, take the mechanical advance weights and springs off, pull the shaft out a little bit, rotate it 180 degrees, put it back down, reinstall the locking nut on the threaded screw here, reinstall it in the engine with the proper timing for initial startup. This is an ATI distributor. These are not readily set up for being ignition time to control capable. So if you have one of these, you can keep it and use the tack input, but to set it up with ignition time to control is uh, beyond the scope of this video. Another thing that you'll need to use on our ignition time to control setup is a phaseable rotor. A standard rotor is positioned with a rotor tip directly on the tooth of the reluctor wheel. With our system, we are advancing the timing from there and you may experience arcing underneath the cap. With a phaseable rotor, the rotor tip is advanced with relation to the pickup wheel on the distributor. This allows the arc to be minimized or completely eliminated. It will allow the rotor tip to line up with a post on the distributor cap. If you don't use a phaseable rotor, you may be limited to the amount of advance you can increase from the base advance. With a non-phaseable rotor, you may be only able to adjust about 15 degrees from the base timing. With a phaseable rotor, we typically are able to do 28 to 30 degrees above the base timing before arcing becomes an issue. A phaseable rotor is adjustable. We want to advance it approximately half to three quarters of the width of the rotor tip. That way when it's cranking, it'll be arcing off the trailing edge. When we're advancing, it'll be arcing off the leading edge. Be sure to lock these screws down very tightly and with Loctite. If these come loose, the rotor will flop around and will cause misfire. Only the high power output wires from the CDI box should be connected to the ignition coil. This goes for using timing control or non-timing control. No tack wires or any other wires should be connected to an ignition coil when using a CDI box. Damage will result. When setting up ignition timing control, it's important to have either a degreed balancer or a dialed back timing light. This allows you to see the ignition timing advance while the engine is running and is important for setting up the distributor properly on the engine. To set up ignition timing control with a Phytech EFI system, there are three important things. Connecting the two-wire input to the distributor's two wires. Make sure these two wires are twisted together to reduce RFI interference. So, connect the key wire from the coil from the key switch and connect the coil output to the coil directly. There should not be any ballast resistors involved. The ignition coil works by having voltage and current pass through it during the coil dwell. The computer controls the dwell and the end of dwell. The end of dwell is when the coil is disconnected suddenly, the coil has a magnetic field buildup that collapses and generates a high voltage. The coil acts as a transformer. It sends high voltage out the ignition wires to the spark plug and causes a spark which ignites the fuel and generates all the power that your engine makes. The purpose of ignition timing control is to deliver the spark to a cylinder at the right time. If the spark is not delivered at the right time, some of the side effects could be ignition knock or very poor efficiency. 
if it's completely at the wrong time, it won't ignite at all. At cranking speeds, the coil it begins to dwell when the tooth passes the pickup and then fires a few degrees afterwards. At cranking, we also do a multiple spark. So after the first spark, there's a short delay and then a second spark is generated with enough time to deliver the spark to that cylinder. You can hear that with this spark plug right now. It has a little bit of an extra zzz, rather than a tick, tick, tick. If I get high enough, it'll just be single spark. But if you go low, it's... Ignition timing requirements vary based on several variables. The engine speed, the engine load, the engine temperature, the fuel octane, and a few other things that can change as the engine runs. There are a few things that are fixed that may make your engine require a different ignition timing curve than another engine. The camshaft, the compression ratio, altitude, all can have an effect on the ignition timing requirements for your system. Engine idle speed control also utilizes the ignition timing to stabilize the engine speed. This is done by advancing the ignition timing if the engine speed is detected to be too low or retarding the ignition timing if it's too high. Thus, when we set up our idle spark timing, we are actually going to set it up a little bit retarded from MBT or test timing for that engine speed. So we will retard it maybe six degrees so that it has some range of torque effect when we add timing and it won't over advance from that condition. Many V8 engines require similar ignition timing curves. The timing curve that we supply out of the box should be able to run most engines, but some engines may need more total timing at full throttle, maybe needs less timing at full throttle, and maybe the idle advance should be adjusted to be maybe less for a more mild engine, maybe more for a radical camshaft. I typically use below 20 degrees for milder camshafts, maybe 22 to 26 degrees for a radical camshaft. At the cruise load ranges, we want to advance the timing as much as possible for maximum economy. That would be in the 3,000 and 6,000 and 40 kPa timing areas of the spark timing map. A typical number might be 40 degrees, maybe even more. Mechanical advance and vacuum advance maybe go as high as 50 degrees, but with our system, based on the limitations of the base timing and under cap arcing, we may be limited to 40 degrees or maybe 42 degrees. You can experiment to see does your engine misfire if you advance further than 42. Our throttle body and ultra ram ECUs do not use knock control. Knock control would detect knock and retard the timing. Our system does not utilize that, so it does not learn anything based on knocking. So if you are experiencing knocking, you will need to reduce the timing in the range that you're experiencing knock. Typically it would be in the lower RPMs and the medium to high loads. If you have set up everything correctly with your distributor and with the base timing on the handheld and moved the distributor properly in the engine and locked it down, the ignition timing on the handheld should match what you see with a timing light. In the handheld, you'll see there's an idle advance, an 1145 kPa, a 3045 kPa, a 6045 kPa. 45 kPa is high back. You'll be able to use higher ignition advances at those points. At idle, we do not want to use as much ignition timing as will cause the highest engine speed. We want to enable the idle speed control to have some range of advanced adjustment so that the idle speed can be controlled properly. The WOT 1100, 3000, and 6000 RPM are based on 95 kPa of manifold pressure. At lower RPMs, we need lower advance. At higher RPMs, we can go up to the full total timing. For example, maybe 1100 might be in the high teens, maybe even the low teens of spark advance. 3,000, we might be wanted all in, say 30, 32, maybe a little bit more. 6,000 can have even more. 
And this is harder to replicate with a mechanical advance on a real distributor, but with a computer, we can do that. If you have a power adder system, there's boost. Boost is based on 180 kPa of manifold pressure, which is about 10 psi. Boost will need to have ignition timing less than your total timing at naturally aspirated 95 kPa max manifold pressure. Be sure to set it up safely for your engine combination. An engine dyno is the best way to set up your ignition timing map. You can set the loads and feeds to optimize the timing on the engine dyno. If you do not have access to an engine dyno, a chassis dynamometer can be used for the full throttle timing, and cruising on the street or on the dyno can help you adjust your part throttle and low RPM points to optimize them for your system. To set up your system for ignition time to control, you first need to enable ignition time to control. In the GoEFI initial setup, go to the engine setup, scroll to the bottom, You'll see TAC or two wire plus coil. Set that to be VR coil, send it to the ECU, and then turn off the ignition switch. This allows the time for the ECU to save that setting into the memory so that when you turn it on the next time, it does the initialization properly to enable the coil driver and other systems that are required for ignition timing control. Now with the key back on, we can get the engine started after the distributor's been installed properly. We'll have to go and set the timing. So to set the timing with the key on or engine running, we'll go into initial setup, ignition setup, and use the lock timing to set. Set it to lock and press OK. Now the engine will try to be ran at 30 degrees. That'll actually be about 14 degrees, 13 and a half degrees above the base time. We can see in the dashboard that it actually is commanding 30 degrees. So now we go to the engine, use the timing light, rev the engine to 2000, check the timing, Hopefully it's 30 degrees or move the distributor to get it. Then check again at 4,000. At 4,000, the timing at the engine should still stay 30 degrees. With timing set, I can unlock it or turn the key off. With the timing unlocked, we can see that the engine actually runs at the commanded timing, but at idle it bounces around to try to stabilize the idle speed. If I open the throttle, it goes to the, the table values that are in the park map. So I cruise 40 degrees. Full throttle, full throttle, it hit 30s, just like the spark map was shown. So the idle will bounce around 20 depending on the RPM. Cruise, 43. Full throttle, 29 to 33. So that's how you set up the ignition timing control with a FITEC EFI system. If you're having any trouble, please refer back to your instruction manual. If you really need help, call our tech support. We'll be glad to help you. Comment below with any questions you might have. If you want to check out more of our Tech Tuesday FITEC videos, Click here.